this example, we're going to set up a system of equations to solve a real-life world problem. In this one, it's about a plane flying with the wind and against the wind. And they're asking us to find the wind velocity and the speed of the plane. So these things that they're asking us to find are rates, and that's kind of cluing us in. So we're just going to go ahead and set some variables on those. Let's let the wind velocity be W for wind and the speed of the plane, we're going to let that be S. Okay. Um, this particular problem is about traveling, so we're going to use D equals R times T. And when you use the D equals R times T, it's sometimes helpful to set a table up and organize your values in that table so that you can see what you have. So the first trip that the plane makes is with the wind, and we're going to put that in the first row of our table, the with the wind, and we want to put the information in there. That plane went 550 miles for its distance, and it also spent two and a half hours traveling with the wind. On the return trip against the wind, we're going to make that the second trip and put that stuff in the second row. And plane went 340 miles and also still spent two and a half hours in the air. So the only thing we need to fill in our table now in, are the rate positions. So we're going to think about those rates. Um, a rate with the wind, if you've got a plane and you've got the wind pushing it along, they're both working in the same direction, it's pushing the plane along faster, you're going to add those rates together because it's going to make the plane a little bit faster. S plus W. So we're going to put those two rates together in the first trip with the wind. Thinking about that plane going against the wind, the plane has turned around now, but the wind is still pushing in that direction opposite, slowing the plane down. So instead of adding the wind to the speed of the plane, we're going to take the wind speed away, and that's going to be S minus W against the wind. So with the wind, you're adding the two rates together, and against the wind, you're going to subtract that wind rate off, because that's going to make the plane go a little bit slower, and as you see, the plane doesn't go as far on that second trip. Now you will just write the two equations. So let's look at that first trip with the wind. If we multiply the time and the rate together, you can get the 2.5 with the parentheses S plus W equals the distance of 550. That's your first trip with the wind. The second trip, go ahead and do the same thing. The 2.5, you're going to multiply it by the S minus W against the wind, and that um, distance is 340 miles. So now you have two equations that you can solve, and that's going to give you what these S and W values are. Let's go ahead and distribute the 2.5 to solve the problem. So that's going to give us positive 2.5s and positive 2.5w in that first equation. Don't touch the 550 because the 2.5 is only on the left hand side of the equation. Distribute the 2.5 in the second equation and get 2.5s minus 2.5w equals 340. And these are really nicely set up for addition. So we're going to do our addition and notice that the w's cancel out. Adding those s's together gives us 5s, and adding the 550 and 340 together gives you 890. Divide by 5, and you get s is equal to 178. That is the speed of the plane, 178 miles per hour. Take that 178, and either equation that you wrote, I just chose one of those first ones after I distributed, and we're going to plug the 178 in for the S. Plug that in and multiply the 2.5 by the 178 to get 445. You need to subtract the 445, and that gives you 2.5W equals 105. Divide by 2.5, and your W, or your wind speed, is, or wind velocity, is 42 miles per hour. So you have effectively answered that question.